Hey friends, it's Cody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing all kinds of well. So it's that time in the month again. Who's ready for another Wheel of TBR video? As always, before we begin, let's talk about how I did in April. So these were the 12 books I chose from last month's wheel and you guys, I bloody did it. I managed to read all 12 of those books. It's the first month it's happened since I started this back in September and I'm feeling all kinds of proud of myself. Thank you, thank you. I know, not all heroes wear capes. So before we start spinning the wheel, I need to let you know what readathons I'm going to be doing this month. Well, I'm actually co-hosting a readathon called Bingoathon this month. I will leave the link in the description for my announcement video for it. So this is going to be a really fun, laid-back readathon. You don't have to fill in every square. The aim is just to fill out the one square. You can also double up, triple up on challenges, read as much or as little as you want in the week. <laughs> So as you can imagine, I'll be aiming to pick books from the wheel that will also fit some of those challenges. And in the center square, we have our group book, which is Once and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Cory McCarthy. So spoiler alert, this one will probably come up at some point. There are also a couple of other readathons that I hope to participate in, but it'll be real loosely because obviously I'm aiming just to read as much as I can in that week because I'm a host. However, we have Asianathon and Mental Healthathon happening this month too, so if I can, I'll try and get some books that fit with those challenges. Again, I will link the announcements for those in the description too. So we have our 12 original prompts as always. I haven't changed anything up in that regard, although as you know, every time I spin, I change the prompt up for that color. I'll be using some of the suggested prompts from you guys. I've also added in a couple of extra ones this month too. So this should be fun and hopefully the wheel isn't too much of a bitch to me this month. So with all that being said, let's spin the wheel. And our first one is TBR Vet, so I will just pick out some options. Okay, so three that I haven't mentioned that much, I don't think, in my previous Wheel of TBR videos that have been on here a while. We have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, Flowers in the Attic by Virginia Andrews. I know this was popular months ago when I did my viewer pick. And also Oryx and Crate by Margaret Atwood. And you know what? I don't feel like crying. <laughs> so I'm going to pick between these two. I will read this one at some point. I know this isn't real popular, but... I just don't want that emotional devastation in May. So, between these, I am very intrigued for this one, honestly, but this one I feel like could possibly be a five star. Yeah, my friend has read it as well and she's been at me to read this one. So I'm gonna go for Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood for TBR Vet. Let me know if you've read this one and your thoughts on it, guys. So let's switch out the first prompt. I'll just pick at random, we'll go for this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Phone a friend. I'm quite happy I've picked this one because I have my friend Becca from Becca and the Books on hand for this, it, should it come up. This one was suggested by a few of you and should this come up, I will just send Becca some pictures of my shelves, let her choose which book I read. Also, I don't think I've mentioned in a Wheel TBR video before, but my babe Becca from Becca and the Books, you know, the one who I'm going to be asking, she actually does kind of like a TBR game series herself called Bookopoly, Becca's Bookopoly. You've probably seen it. I can imagine a lot of you who watch my videos also watch hers but if not I will link it in the description highly recommend you go and check that out if you like this kind of thing <laughs> so this one's going on here <laughs> five star prediction. I made a five star prediction video a while ago and I think I only have one of those left from that video and that is After Dark by Murakami. I really like Murakami so this is why I said it could possibly be a five star. I read Norwegian Wood which I gave five stars and Kafka on the Shore which was like a four star if I remember correctly. I can't tell you what this one is about because I don't know anything about this book. I just know it's Murakami and I want to read it. His books are kind of contemporary but usually have like a speculative magical realist fantastic twist in some way they're always a little bit odd and whenever I've read a synopsis of one of his books and actually read the book it's not been what I've expected so I'm very you know happy I guess to go into this one not knowing so I'll be reading After Dark this month they will also work for the Asianathon which works out quite well and switching out that prompt we'll switch it one to let's go for Blind this one came up last month so if this comes up if you didn't see last month's video if this one comes up it means that I just kind of reach behind me not knowing what I'm picking because honestly I don't know what order this is in. It used to be in order but now it's just a mess but I mean same. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, that one's close, but it is most recent purchase, so I'll just show you the books I bought most recently. So I have five of them here that I'm so excited for all of these. We have Senlin Ascend by Josiah Bancroft, which is an adult, I believe, high fantasy. Once and Future, of course. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna pick this one, but I'll still show you the rest. We also have a manga, which is My Brother's Husband, which I've heard amazing things about. And The Weight of the Stars by Kate Ancrum, and My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. So no doubt I'll be picking some of those for some of these prompts because I'm so excited. I bought them brand new, so obviously I'm really excited to get to them. But as I said, it's gonna be once in future, hasn't it? Because this is the group book for Bingo-a-thon. I'm really excited about this one. It's a retelling of the King Arthur tales, but it's set in space and I believe we have queer characters. Our main character who plays Arthur, Ari, is female. I've heard amazing things. Really excited that we chose this one for the group book, so of course, uh, you know, I picked this one obviously. <laughs> and switching out most recent purchase, let's go for <laughs> Pet Pick. So just like last month, I have pre-filmed a clip of my cats picking books and as you can imagine, just like last month, it was kind of stressful. But it's going on here and I'll let you know if it comes up what they chose. <laughs> Okay, next we have series. I do have quite a few options for series because fantasy is my favourite genre and they usually do come in series. However, I am going to pick The Saviour's Champion by Jenna Moresi. This was very kindly sent to me last month by Bobby at Bobby Reads Too Much. She is amazing. I will link her channel in the description for you to go check out. And she very kindly sent this to me because it was her favourite book of last year and she has me so hyped for it. We have very similar tastes, especially in fantasy, so I feel like I'm really, really gonna love this one too. I've heard great things about this one. Apparently it is brutal and gritty. I don't know too much about it, I just know that it is the beginning of a series and we have a character called Tobias who is going to join this competition, this contest, I guess, to become the husband to this woman named the saviour in this world. So it's him and a bunch of other men trying to win her hand. And I didn't think I'd love it when I first heard about it that much because romance isn't my kind of thing. But Bobby has taught this up so much. I love adult fantasy that's, you know, gritty. I keep saying gritty, but that's probably the best word to describe it. I'm really excited. Okay, so this one is my next pick. What was it for? Series. This is my pick for series. <laughs> and switching out series, we'll go for one in the middle. Most anticipated. Okay, that's a good one. Switching it out. Now we have rep, which stands for good representation, and I'm going to pick one of the new ones, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to do myself a favour early on, and I'm going to pick the manga that I just bought. <laughs> so this is My Brother's Husband by Gengora Tagami, I think I got that right, and I've heard amazing things about this one too. As you can guess from the title, this has great representation for the LGBTQIA community. I believe this one is about a man who lives in Japan, his brother has just passed away, however his brother's husband, who is Canadian, comes over to stay with them and I believe this has him coming to terms, I guess, not necessarily with homophobia, but he wasn't necessarily happy to find out that his brother was gay and married a man. I don't know if that's 100% correct, but I have heard amazing things about this one in particular. It's been on my wishlist for a while. I heard great things from April at April as Maximus and Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads. I trust their opinion. This is supposed to be really lighthearted and heartwarming. I'm super excited for this and I'm doing myself a favor. Also, works for Asianathon. Yay! <laughs> and switching out the prompt, let's go for this one. Ugly cover. Okay, so if this one comes up, I'll pick a book that I don't think has the prettiest of covers. Okay, so Phone a Friend has come up, so I'm just gonna take a picture of my shelves and send that across to Becca. This is gonna be so many pictures, right? <laughs> okay, top shelf. I'm messaging her, please be kind. <laughs> she understands the TBR struggle, honestly. Ever since we both started doing these kind of TBR games every month, both of us are always like, why did we do this to ourselves, you know? I honestly have no idea what she's gonna pick. Oh, she's typing, okay, she's made her decision. Oh, okay, she's gone for genuine fraud. She says she read it in like a day. Okay, so genuine fraud. Don't think I was expecting her to pick that one, but I'm okay with it. So this is by E. Lockhart, they wrote we Were Liars, which I did like, but I read that years ago and I've read more thrillers since then, so 
This one I've had some kind of mixed feedback from, but clearly Becca didn't mind it. <laughs> from what I've heard about this one, it centers around two women and they're kind of chameleons, like social chameleons and liars. There's murder involved, disappearances. I don't know, it's a thriller. I'm quite okay to go into this not knowing too much, but yeah, okay, Becca chose Genuine Fraud, so this is my next pick for this month's TBR. And thanks, Becca, for not doing me too dirty and picking something absolutely huge, although I didn't expect you to. <laughs> She's a good friend, y'all. Okay, so let's switch out phone a friend. I will pick number. So if this one comes up, I will just use a random number generator. I have counted these and I think there's around 100, I think there's actually 97 books on here, but obviously I've pulled some. Um, so there will be 93, math. So if this comes up, a number between one and 93 and I will just, you know, Count them and choose the one. You know what I mean. And we have six bins to go. I got really excited that it'd be a short read then, but then it did me dirt and you went back to the TBR teapot, didn't it? I told you, the wheel is a bitch. Anyway, TBR teapot. <laughs> okay, TBR teapot. I may have read some of these because, like a fool, I didn't like look at this before I started filming. But we have, oh no, I've unhauled that one. That one's a no-go. Okay, so. <laughs> High Fidelity, you probably can't tell because, like a fool, I used blue ink on a purple piece of card. But High Fidelity was the one that was picked. <laughs> It's kind of funny actually because I put this in my most recent Second Chance Book video where I was asking for you guys' feedback should Second Chance Book come up. So High Fidelity, this got a little bit of mixed feedback from you guys. It was mentioned 15 times, I did tally. <laughs> 10 of those reviews were positive, 5 of those were people telling me that they didn't really enjoy this one. From what I'm aware of, it's about a guy who works in a music shop, he collects records. There's also a movie, there's a romance in here. Uh, yeah, some of the negative ones though have told me that it's a bit of a bro book and maybe it hasn't kind of aged well, I guess, in terms of like feminism. So I am intrigued by this. I also really want to watch the movie. I didn't know there was a movie before you guys let me know, so thanks. <laughs> but I am really intrigued. The more positive comments have said that this is quite funny as well, so I love humour in books. Okay, I'll finally be trying High Fidelity this month. I'm switching out that prompt once more. I'll give them a wee shuffle. Let's go for highest rated. So as always, these are all on a shelf on Goodreads and I will sort them via average rating. Oh hell yeah, we have a graphic novel. <laughs> and I'm gonna do what I always do and I'm not gonna pick the ones that I've been on here the longest. I'm gonna pick one that I bought a couple of months ago and that's Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. When I hauled this, a load of people told me that I'll absolutely love this one. This one is about a young girl who lives in a fantasy world called Nimona. Nimona is an impulsive young shapeshifter with a knack for villainy and Lord Ballister Blackheart, who is a villain with a vendetta. A sidekick and supervillain are about to wreak some serious havoc. Yes, please. I've also heard it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> the art style as well. Super cute. We also have dragons. Yes, please. Finally gonna read this. Yay! Another graphic novel to add to this month's TBR. <laughs> I almost want to say that so far the wheel has actually been nice to me this month, but I don't want to jinx myself. Anyway, let's switch up that prompt. Watch me immediately pick out big book. Oh no. Beautiful cover, not so bad. So we have ugly cover on here and now we have beautiful cover. So I guess a cover buy would work for this. Oh, okay, number. So light blue seems to be popular this month, but that's fine. I will just get a number generator up on my phone. I'm just gonna quickly count them, so BRB, just to make sure I get this right. So there's 88 books on here currently that I haven't read. Let's not dwell on that number too much. Okay, so I will generate a random number. 38, you probably can't see this because of the terrible lighting, so I will screenshot this and put it here. 38, okay, so that's probably the second shelf, but I'll quickly count. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 is 
A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGuinness. I picked this one up a couple of months ago. I've since read The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness and I really liked that one. So hopefully I'll like this one too. This one I believe is about a woman who is locked in the Boston Insane Asylum. However, a doctor who dabbles with psychology, criminal psychology, comes and visits her and wants her to help him solve a murder, I think. <laughs> That's what I know about it. I've heard good things. Okay, a madness so discreet, let's do this. Let me know if you've read this one. Okay, I'm switching out number, let's go for this <laughs> big book. Yep, seems legit. author I can pretty much choose almost anything from these shelves but I'm gonna pick a thriller because I've not read a thriller in a while I do have some for second chance book but second chance book hasn't come up yet so I'm kind of not wanting to choose those ones yet but Bobby who sent me The Saviour's Champion last month also sent me The Silent Patient by Alex I had trouble with this last name before I think it's Michaelitis? It's not, it's not, I know it's not. <laughs> okay, I'm struggling with this last name, so I am on howtopronounce.com. Let's see if this helps, okay. Michaelites. Michaelites. I don't think that's right. I think it's Michaelitis. Michaelites. <laughs> I'm about 90% sure it's Michaelitis. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna pick The Silent Patient. This is a thriller. This one, again, is kind of set in a mental health hospital ward. This one is about a woman who's accused of the murder of her husband. However, when she's in this hospital, she isn't speaking. She's kind of gone mute. She won't tell anybody anything about what happened. She was found beside him and he was shot or stabbed, I think. It is also a split perspective, though, between her and her psychotherapist. I've heard good things about this one, especially from G at Book Roast. I know she read this in, like, one sitting. So yeah, okay, I have to read this one, don't I? <laughs> Thank you again to Bobby for sending this one my way. Obviously she sent me this, so I wanted to prioritize it. And I've heard good things. Okay, thrillers are quite easy to get through as well. Not looking bad so far. Again, I'll probably go and jinx myself. Anyway, that's my pick for new author. <laughs> okay, so we only have a couple of spins left to go. So switching out that prompt as well. Let's go for Graveyard. This is one that I've added in here. Uh, because as you know, when I do my TBR videos at the beginning of every month, I let you know how I did in the previous month. And if I didn't read all of them, I have to unhaul them. I do get a save every month though. <laughs> Not that I needed it this month, but whatever. Um, anyway, last month I unhauled Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. And a few of you in my comments were like, no, it was so good. You should totally read it. So if this one comes up, I will pick one of the books I've had to unhaul in a previous TBR. <laughs> no prizes for guessing which one I'll pick if this comes up though. Anyway, next spin. <laughs> oh, okay, that was almost graveyard, so it was almost cat's eye, but it's actually highest rated, so. As I mentioned, I have all of these on Goodreads, so I'm just going to sort by average rating. Okay, so average rating, highest rated. I have a prediction, I don't know if I'm right, but we'll see. yeah, I'm right, okay. Again, you might not be able to see that, so I will just screenshot that for you. But my highest rated is The Nightingale by Christian Hanna, which is on the top shelf. Um, I'm in two minds about this. I know it's supposed to be amazing. Bobby, again, she's recently told me I need to read this one, but I'm not a huge fan of war fiction. I feel like a lot of you will know that by now. It's set in World War II and it's a relationship between two sisters, separated by years and experience by ideals, passion and circumstances. Um, so I probably will like it. I don't know if I'll love it as much as everybody else. A lot of people love this book, but it's not really my genre. I still do want to try it though. I mean, I bought it and it's on these shelves for a reason and that is because it has such good reviews and it's the highest rated. So clearly is good. Okay, I'm reading The Nightingale this month. This is gonna make me cry. <sighs> I didn't pick the Patrick Ness book, did I? Because I thought it would make me cry and then this is the highest rated, so. You're gonna hurt me, you're gonna hurt me. Bring on the inevitable devastation. Anyway, last spin. Oh no, I need to switch the prompt up first. What am I even doing? 
just in general, you know, in life. Anyway, okay, and switching out the last prompt, let's go for one in the middle, hype. Okay, that's quite an easy one. This one comes up on the last spin. I choose a book that has a lot of hype surrounding it. Yes, and the last one is most anticipated. Fuck you, big book. Okay. Okay, so it goes without saying my most anticipated are the ones I've just recently purchased. So we have Senlin Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. I bought this because of Melanie at Mel to the Any. We also have The Weight of the Stars by Kate Ancrum. I bought this one because I loved her previous book, The Wicker King. That was one of my best books of last year. And My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I am so intrigued by this one. I think I love it. So it's a hard decision, honestly. I think I'm gonna go with the one that I'm most confident I will love, and that is The Weight of the Stars by Kate Ancrum. This one is a contemporary, I believe, but technically so was The Wicker King, but that one had like a fantastical element in there. I'm not sure if this one does too, but I've heard amazing things about this one from Ola and also from Julie at Pages and Pens, and I definitely trust their taste, so I had to pick this one up. It's about a young girl who lives in a trailer park who dreams of going into space. There's also a female-female relationship in this book, Book. That's all I really know about it, but it's Kate Ancrum, so I had to go ahead and get it. <laughs> I just loved The Wicker King so much, so yeah, I, this is probably my most anticipated. So this is the last book, y'all. So those are all the spins for this month, my dude. I don't think I've done too bad, actually. I am very happy that big book didn't come up this month. A little bit bummed that pet pick didn't come up, not gonna lie. And also second chance book too, uh, because everybody who left me feedback on that video, it's so appreciated. And I've definitely made some decisions about those books, which I was hoping to talk to you about in this video. But what I think I'm going to do for Second Chance Book is there were some that were really divided, especially the thrillers. So I will be doing a try a chapter video for those thrillers coming soon. That was the top, top comment on that video, honestly, was to do a try a chapter tag with the thrillers. So that's what I'll do. Anyway, that's this month's Wheel of TBR. <laughs> so these are the books on this month's TBR. It's not looking too crazy. However, I completely forgot, didn't I? That I'll be reading A Storm of Swords Part 1 this month. It's fine, I'm sure it'll be fine. As you know, I am a co-host for the Catch Up Book Club for the Song of Ice and Fire Read Along, so I'll be reading this one too. Honestly, I always leave it to the last month, even though this particular edition is split into two parts. Knowing me, I probably won't bloody read it until June anyway for the live show at the end of June. But I'll be reading those 12 and getting through some of this hopefully this month as well. So that's this month's Wheel of TBR video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it as always. Please like and subscribe if you care to do so. And I'll catch you in my next one, my dudes. Bye.